How's it going Star Seekers? My name's Got Cake and welcome back to another SOS review. Today we're going to be taking a look at Broken Lines, a tactical turn-based RPG with a heavy focus on storyline, which follows the journey of eight soldiers who crash land behind enemy lines and have to fight the way back home. The publishers of the game, Super.com, kindly sent me a review copy and also one additional key for the game which I'll be doing a giveaway for, so stay tuned to find out how you can win it. As always, if you enjoy this review, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for future Switch indie game reviews. So as we hit the main menu, we can choose to begin a new game, or if you're new to the genre, or just want a quick rundown on the general gameplay and combat mechanics, you can take a look at the game's tutorials. There are 8 of them and it'll take about 20 minutes in total to complete them all. They run you through stuff like movement, flanking, cover and special abilities, which are generally similar to other games in the genre, but a bit of a spin has been put on the game's turn-based mechanics and I'll cover that shortly. Before beginning a new game, you can head into the game's settings, where you'll find all the basics including controls, video, audio and gameplay settings, and you'll also find a difficulty menu. This lets you pick between easy, medium and hard difficulty presets, but you can also create your own custom difficulty setting, which I thought was a fantastic addition and something that more games should do, as it allows you to fine tune your gameplay experience, giving you the ability to change aspects such as enemy variety, damage and composure multipliers, revive numbers and even whether enemies can move freely or use teamwork. Being the absolute bore that I am, I went full vanilla and picked normal difficulty before beginning a new game. It's worth a mention that if you're finding things too tough, difficulty can also be changed at any point in game, but if you're in a mission you'll have to restart it for the changes to take effect. So as we begin we get a bit of an introduction into the game's storyline, and a Russian sounding lady acts as the game's narrator. In the opening animation we see our recruits aboard a plane, whose controls go haywire and the plane drops out of the sky. The opening mission sees us taking control of the carrot topped recruit Avery, as he seeks out any survivors of the plane crash and we're slowly introduced to the different gameplay mechanics. Movement and actions in the game are performed in 8 second intervals and gameplay pauses when you encounter a new enemy. Here, Avery encounters the game's baddies, these gas mask wearing Nazi inspired troops. Avery struggles a bit with a language barrier and swiftly dispatches the soldier who could have just been asking for help. A little further up the trail, Avery spots one of his comrades who is injured and rushes to help him. This is an example of how the game's revival mechanics work whereby downed soldiers have an icon above them and can be revived by directing a player onto them. If you revive a teammate in a level, they'll gain the injured status which they'll recover from by resting them for a mission, but if you choose to take them into a battle and they're downed again, they'll die and be permanently lost. We also learn how to use utility items by selecting them with a d-pad, and we use the bandage to heal the injured recruit Wood. The two of them then make their way onwards together past additional enemy soldiers who have the high ground, before meeting up with Sherman, the game's scurdy cart. After battling their way through the remaining enemies, they reach the level's end point indicated by this flag icon. So outside of missions, your squad members will gather at a campsite. Here is where the squad management takes place, with a number of different actions available. Firstly, we can edit each character's loadout. Weapons come in one of three types, long range rifles, medium range SMGs, or short range shotguns. And utility equipment can range from healing items, to things like frag grenades, smoke grenades, and even a rocket launcher. Weapons also get a special ability that can be used an unlimited number of times in combat. Shotguns get a knockdown ability, SMGs get a suppression ability, and rifles get an aim ability increase in accuracy at long ranges. All weapons and utilities are shared between all squad members, and after a few missions you'll rescue a guy called Iskor. He'll sell you additional supplies, weapons and utilities between missions. These exchanges cost salvage though, which can be found within containers in some levels as well as a reward at the end of the mission. Performing better in the missions increases the reward multiplier resulting in more salvage. And as you progress through the story, Iskor's inventory will improve, providing more powerful weapons and better utility items. Abilities are gained as you progress through the game and usually have both positive and negative effects. They can either be passive abilities that activate when affected by specific status effects such as when injured or active abilities with a limited number of uses per mission. Traits are permanent passives that are unique to each character. They're usually acquired through random encounters or interactions between squad members before or after each mission and can have a positive or negative impact on a squad member. Finally, each character has a biography which tells you a little bit about them and the combat style and displays the relationships with other members of the squad. This affects how they fight together in battle and a character will perform better or worse when in close proximity to them. 
Each character also has a composure bar which affects the performance during a mission, and some characters are more seasoned to the horrors of war than others. Haley is a veteran of war, but Fry for example is a recruit, and he's more likely to panic, resulting in you losing control over him for a round. So as you progress through the story, you're given different choices on which missions you want to undertake. You usually get a choice of one or two, and each mission takes place in a different location, at different times of day, and the maximum number of squad members you can deploy into a mission varies, and is displayed in the bottom right corner. Depending on which mission you choose, it can change the events you experience in a playthrough, which also gives the game some replayability. Missions themselves take place over a variety of level layouts, and the developers have done a decent job at providing multiple ways in which to approach an objective. When it comes to the objectives, they're generally pretty straightforward, usually requiring you to reach a certain location, clear eight enemies, or find a particular item, but combat and movement throughout is generally pretty good. It feels a bit faster paced and with less downtime than other tactical RPGs such as the XCOM series, though I do have a few points of criticism. Firstly, I think the game should have included a sneak and stealth kill mechanic. We're supposed to be leading a group of soldiers through enemy territory, but they open fire as soon as they come into contact with an enemy, even if the enemy has its back to us. This also ties into another issue, which is the inability to target specific enemies. Instead, squad members just fire at a random enemy within range. Healing in the game is also very overpowered, since every healing has an area of effect, which allows you to use a single bandage to heal your whole team, providing you huddle them close enough together. And lastly, enemy AI is a little weak at times. If you play the game as intended, by using cover and duking it out at a distance, they perform fine. But I learned that if you rush every team member in at once, the enemies get a bit flustered and end up just running for cover, allowing you to just mow them down, often taking little damage in the process. This made the game a bit of a breeze, at least on normal difficulty, and I sometimes found I was able to abandon combat altogether and just run for an objective to complete the level, and usually only one squad member actually needs to reach the objective to trigger it. And so this is how the general gameplay loop goes. We complete missions to progress the storyline and pick up new squad members along the way. Following each mission, one supply will be consumed for each squad member, and running out of supplies will reduce the squad's composure until you gain enough to feed them again. Additional supplies can be found within missions or bought from Iskar for salvage. To flesh out the game's storyline and build on the personalities of each character, interaction between squad members can be triggered as they gather around the campfire. These are often choices to make to resolve disagreements between squad members, which usually results in friendships improving or degrading, and or the acquisition of supplies, abilities or traits. There are also random encounters that you can partake in before each mission, and these can result in a similar outcome. However, some decisions you make may also have a knock-on effect, such as here where I helped this woman in a previous decision, and in a later random event she brought me some weapons. So before I give you my opinions on the game, let's talk about how you can win a key for it. Now all you have to do is ensure you subscribe to the channel and submit a comment down below with a game that you'd like to see an action RPG version of and why. I'll announce a winner at random from those who have commented this Sunday, which is the 10th of May 2020. So in all, I found my experience playing Broken Lines to be a positive one. I enjoyed the storyline, character development and the inclusion of decision making in both mission selection and interactions, which gives the game variety to each playthrough. As mentioned before, the combat was sometimes a little easy, but the comprehensive difficulty settings can remedy this issue. I did at some point experience some minor frame rate issues on occasions, but nothing major, and in general the game's graphics weren't bad. I would have liked to see a little more detail on character models, with a bit more creativeness put into making them distinguishable from one another, and some good voice acting would have also been a great addition, to really drive home the narrative, and better portray each character's personality. So I give games a rating between 1 and 5 stars, with a shovelware stamp of approval awarded to the worst eShop titles. This rating is based on my own personal opinions on what games have to offer in terms of gameplay and value for money to potential buyers. And for a rating, I'd give Broken Lines 3 out of 5 stars. In all, it's a good tactical RPG game with a decent storyline and enjoyable gameplay mechanics. The difficulty settings make it accessible to anybody, from people who have never played the genre to seasoned veterans, though the latter may find the game a little easy in comparison to games like XCOM. You can get Broken Lines off the UK Switch eStore for £22.49, which if I'm honest may be a little steep. It's also available on the US eStore for $24.99. Alternatively, the game's also available on Steam, and it should be coming out for Xbox One and PlayStation 4 in the near future. 
And that's it for this review of Broken Lines. Hit that like button if it helped you out and let me know what you thought of it and the game in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be notified of future Switch indie game reviews. As always I want to thank you all once again for watching and until next time, game on.